So, hi, hello, um, uh, this isn't the fireball spammer, as it's pretty obvious. Uh, you might be wondering where that is, I haven't actually finished it yet. If you didn't know, I stream my challenge runs on, well, this very channel. And I haven't finished the fireball spammer, it's taking longer than I thought. My goal is to get it out next week, but I wanted to do something a bit smaller today, a bit, uh, more fun, I guess. Something I could get down on sort notice, and we are going to be ranking the Dark Souls 3 summons today. It is just something I kind of have been doing a little bit of, I guess. I don't know. I've been a Sunbro for about five years now, uh, and as such, I know quite a bit about co-op. And I also play a lot of the time with the NPC summons because I do enjoy just, like, using them. So we are going to go through and kind of rank each of these, just kind of in general tiers, uh, just off of my opinion. The ranking for this is going to be based off of the damage, the survivability, and the amount of bosses they're in. That's kind of the primary, like, thing. Pretty much, how much damage do they do, how much, uh, how much can they take, how many bosses are they in, and, like, you know, if there's any, like, special things that might make them stand out, or might kind of help to mitigate those three options. So we're gonna start off with Honori, Honori of Stora. They are there for Deacons of the Deep and Pontiff Sullivan. She is actually pretty fucking good. She has okay damage. The issue comes with the fact that her uh, her survivability isn't super high. It's a lot higher in Pontiff than it is in Deacons, because in Deacons she seems to get overwhelmed a whole lot. But against Pontiff Sullivan, she's actually really good. In my testing run, she almost survived the entire fight. So on, overall, I think she's a pretty good summon. Um, two bosses and all that bad for a Dark Souls 3 summon, so I'm gonna put her up in a low A tier. Egon. Okay, Egon, I... Honestly, I went into this thing that Egon was gonna be one of the best summons in the game, but he's really not super good. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's for Crystal Sage and Dragon Slayer armor. In both of those, he's not super, like... He's a lot better in Sage, because it's Sage. Uh, he can take a good hit, he deals good damage against her. Um, the issue is that he has a hard time finding where to go. And against the Dragon Slayer armor, he just will not put his shield up. He has a very hard time keeping his shield up. But he's still a good, like, tank. If you can drag aggro off him every once in a while, uh, he'd do pretty good. But overall, I think he's probably B tier if I really had to guess. Okay, Hawkwood. Hawkwood's weird. Um, Hawkwood kind of sucks. Uh, but it's, it's complicated. So, Hawkwood, uh, is there for the run-up to getting the Twinkling Dragon Torso Stone and Osiris. Of course, like, he's okay when doing the whole run-up to the Twinkling Dragon torso, torso Stone. He's not, like, super good or whatever, but he can help thin out the crowd a bit. But against Osiris, he is horrible. I just kind of let him do his thing. He was continuously walking into mist and trying to block the fucking dragon with his goddamn small shield. Uh, so overall, Hawkwood's not super good. His damage is pretty pitiful as well. Um, so yeah, I'd probably put him in like a D tier. Not a very good summon, in my opinion. Not a very good summon. Okay, Horus. Horus is one of those summons that I believe could be really, really good if he was in more bosses. He is not, he's in one boss. He is in Deacons of the Deep, but he is really good in Deacons of the Deep. He's very tanky and he has a fucking halberd and he loves to use it. He already deals good damage, but couple in the fact that he's using a halberd for crowd control and it makes his invasion form or his, uh, his hollow form seem way different in comparison. He's honestly very competent. I just wish he was in more fights. So I'm going to put him probably a above Egon in B tier. But I can't put him in say, like A tier, for example, because if I put him in A tier, like I feel like you have to have more than one boss to really be able to be in A or S tier, in my opinion. But he really does excel, so he's going to be high B for me. Orbeck, okay. Orbeck has the same problem as Cirrus. Um, low damage, low survivability, and is literally just cannon fodder. I think he does 50 damage to Lothric and Lorien. Yeah, he's not very good. Uh, this is one of the ones I didn't do, um, like, a, like during my playthrough, but I did look it up. I have looked up the videos and stuff of him. So he is, um, who boy. Yeah, 
I... Yeah, I'm gonna say F tier. Honestly, I think this might be our first F tier. Uh, he's got horrible survivability, low damage, and he only appears in one boss. Now there's already another summon for, and all those Cirrus fucking sucks. Orbeck isn't any better. Okay, um, Yuria, Yuria. Uh, I'm gonna say this right now, Yuria is D tier. Um, she only has one boss, but it is the final boss after all. And she has moderate survivability, like she can take a few hits before she goes down. Uh, but she does next to no damage. The only reason that she's not in F tier is because she can bleed. She can hit bleeds. But other than that, honestly, she's Pale Shade, I guess. Like, if you really need a summon for this, you should probably just use Pale Shade. Though I guess at the same time, you also need to keep Yuria alive as a summon in order to be able to get the Black Set without having to kill her. So it's really up to you if you want to use her. She can be okay if uh, you can kind of keep her, if you can kind of keep Solicitor, like, away. Because she is, has a hard time getting off consistent hits. Patches! So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put both Patches and Lap together for this. And it's really, really hard to rank Lap. He's really, really good in one fight, and he's only okay in another. He, I still think he's gonna be S tier in my opinion. Like, he's still one of the, like, he's still like an amazing summon, if for nothing, because he could literally carry Demon Prince. He's got okay damage, but he's like Havel tanky. He is really tanky. Dude can carry that fight for you. But outside of like, outside of that, in Spears of the Church, it really depends on the person that you're going up against. Against Half Light, he's pretty good because, well, it's Half Light. But like against like an actual player, it's very dependent on the player. On whether or not he's either going to be a hindrance or a help. I mean, obviously, I can't really fault him too much for that, so he is gonna go up in S tier for me because he can help out against Spear of the Church. Honestly, I I, just, I think he carries Demon Prince so hard that I can excuse his slightly more shaky half like half light just because of how well he carries it. And also, it like it's more Boston than like Horus. Sirius, if I'm not mistaken, let me quickly look through here. I believe Sirius is four bosses. Yeah, it is. A, uh, she's there for Abyss Watchers. Uh, Dragon Slayer armor, Lothric and Lorien, and Deacons. So in Deacons of the Deep, she is essentially single target. She is horrible in that fight. She's using the fucking thrusting sword. I believe she's using an S stock, so she could heavy attack, but she doesn't really use that. Besides that, even if she does, her damage is pitiful. Her damage is horrible. It is, oh boy, it, it's bad. And she also, like, she can't really take any more hits than, say, like, Henri or Horus, so... Yeah. Abyss Watchers, I ended up skipping her in my playthrough because you can only have two summons for Abyss Watchers in this, but I think the other two bosses we're gonna go over will kind of speak for her in terms of that. Um, she still has no survivability and damage for either Lothric and Lorien or Dragon Slayer armor, but at the very least, her heal came in clutch when paired with Egon once or twice. But other than that, I just, I didn't see much, like, I, I just, I didn't see, like, any results from her. She's not very good. Um, so she's going down with Orbeck. Uh, I'm only putting her ahead of Orbeck because Orbeck is, uh, because Orbeck doesn't have boss. Uh, Orbeck, I can't speak. Oh my god. Orbeck, uh, only has one boss, whereas Cirrus has three. Four. My bad. Sigurd! You would not expect Sigurd to be on this list, but Sigurd is on this list. Sigurd makes Yorm laughable if you get the Storm Roller fast. If you don't get the Storm Roller quick enough, Sigurd's gonna die. Sigurd will die. Sigurd cannot take a whole ton of hits on his own, but he can take enough for you to be able to pick up the Storm Roller and then join the fight with him. If you can keep aggro on, which you should be able to do pretty quickly if you uh, spam enough Storm Roller hits, the fight is literally, like, easy. It's free. Because, like, why not, I guess? Put him top of B tier, because he is only one boss. And I don't really want to- again, I don't really want to put people that are multi- that are one boss any higher than, say, like, B tier. <clears throat> but, whatever. Shira! Oh my god! Okay, Shira surprised me. So, Shira's only boss fight is Madeir, right? You know, one of the toughest fights in the game. And she's not a tank. Her survivability is horrible, but she did the most damage out of 
any NPC on this list. She was hitting about 500 damage with a lightning arrow. And she's ranged, so she can hit behind you while you're taking care of the boss. She is a perfect support character, honestly. If she wasn't only there for one boss, I would put her higher. But I'm probably going to put her... I'm going to put her above Horus. I would say B tier for Sia, for Shira. Shira is really good. And she has no right to be really good, I'm going to be honest. But holy shit, she is really good. Just purely based on the fact she does good damage. And she stays in the back. Black Hand. Black Hand is there for a Pontiff and Abyss Watchers. He has a bow. So you think, oh, yeah, so just like a... Uh, Shira, he, he should be pretty good, right? No, he doesn't. He barely takes it out. And his damage barely tickles like 40. His damage is pitiful in most circumstances. Absolutely, like, pitiful. Uh, my only notes for Pontiff, by the way, uh, for him are my dear sweet summer child because he got shredded. <laughs> he got shredded in Pontiff's fight. Uh, so I feel bad. But yeah, I'll put him in... Do I want to put him in D tier, though? Because D tier has Hawkwood, who helps you run up, but, like, still can't fucking survive. But, like, you can get used out of Hawkwood. You can get used out of Hawkwood, so I'm gonna put him in C tier. If for nothing else, we don't have any other C tiers. So I'm gonna put him in C tier, just so we have something there. Plus, I do think he's a step above, say, Hawkwood and Yuria. Because, you know, he appears in multiple fights for ones so that already gives a bit of a, a bit of a boost. And he has a bow, even if he barely uses it. So that gives him some survivability. Uh Cuculus is also going to go in C tier. Above uh above Black Hand. You are you would be surprised. So Cuculus is really weird. Because Cuculus is it, like, Cuculus is, she does next to no damage. Just like, say, like, Black Hand or, like, a lot of the lower tier summons, she does next to no damage. But she can poison the old Demon King, which is always really nice, because it's just a slow tick of damage that helps you add, that. Uh, it adds up over time. And, unlike, uh, unlike someone else we're gonna be getting to, she has Estus. She's actually got, she can take a few hits. It's not a whole ton, but she can take a few hits. And she... It's honestly, she, she's an okay support. I, like, I wouldn't use her most of the time, but she, she's okay. She's actually pretty okay for old Demon King. Sorig! Oh my god, Sorig! Sorig? Sorig is depressing. You would think, after, you know, Black Iron Tarkus from Dark Souls 1, that this dude would be fucking amazing. He's not. And there's one simple thing about that. He doesn't bring Estus. He doesn't bring Estus. So he's horrible against the fucking old Demon King. I know you're kind of like supposed to bring him through the uh, like through the dungeon. But like, even then, I think, feel like at that point, Estus is even more important. So yeah, um, pretty trash summon. Uh, would always get killed very early on against old Demon King. So we are going to put him in a D tier. Below... Do we want to put him below Yuria? Because Yuria can bleed, but Yuria... Hmm. Nah, Yuri, Yuri had better survivability. Albert, um, he lasted half the fight for Vort, but of course it's still only one boss, and he's not super amazing in that boss. Um, he does okay damage, and he can take a he can take a few hits. Uh, I would like not as much as say like Edon or Horus or anything like that, but he can take a few hits. The issue comes from the fact he's one boss, and Although he's, like, really good with that one boss when it comes to, like... He's good with that one boss when it comes to, say, like, helping out, like, new players. He's not, like, a super good summon, so I'm probably gonna put him above Cuculus and... Uh, a Black Hand in C tier. Yeah, just another kind of mid-summon. Pale Shade! Okay, Pale Shade's weird. Um, because you would think that as a source for Pale Shade's best like, skill would be their spells. But it's not. Uh, Pale Shade has horrible spells. Um, Affinity, which is the main spell that they use, is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Laughable damage. But, 
that Morion Blade that they wield actually does some good damage. I think, uh, I think Duke was hitting like 200 damage on Abyss Watchers and Pontiff. He's actually got some pretty damn good damage, but his survivability is very low. So you kind of need to have either you or another summon tank for him. Which is actually pretty good while he's, uh, while he's a summon for Pontiff, because Henri can, uh, Henri can tank for him. While, uh, Pale Sheep puts on some hurt. I think he's... Hmm. I'm gonna put him in low B tier. I think he's... Do I think he's better than Egon? Um... Hmm. Fuck. Actually, this is hard, because I don't know if he's better than Egon or not to me. Because he's pretty damn good, but I don't think he's, like, better than, say, like, Yorm, Shira, Horus, all of them. Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna leave it for now. They're close. Swordmaster! Okay, Swordmaster is for two fights. Um... Swordmaster got fucking shredded for Vort. But... Overall, like, I don't think it was, like, horrible, if I'm not mistaken. But in that attempt that I got for that playthrough, he's horrible. He got himself fucking shredded. But the issue when it comes to Ranky Kim is he has good damage, like pretty fucking good damage, and has mediocre survivability, like m like mediocre, like moderate survivability against Champ Gundir. With minimal help, he almost he, he basically soloed the fight. I put in a few parries and attacked a few times, but most of the work was him. Swordmaster is good. Hell, I think he's probably better than Honri, in my opinion. I think... I think he's better than Honri, even though I still think Honri is a very good summon. Because you can't just... Like, literally be able to... Why do I have both patches and lap here? Get the fuck out of here, bitch. Uh, he's a very good summon for one fight, and he's mediocre for another. But, honestly, if you haven't, use them against, use them against Champ Gundir. Honestly, you will not regret it. Okay, Heisel, the other of the people that I didn't end up actually doing on my own, and I had to look up a video for. I wanted to look up multiple videos, because honestly, I was surprised. Heisel's good. Heisel's actually pretty goddamn good. Um, because, like, Heisel has good damage, and could take a hit. Like, for some fucking reason. The spells are absolutely laughable, but that pick does damage. It's a similar case with uh, Pale Shade, but... She has survivability to go with it. So I think she's better, but she's only for one fight. So I think I'm going to put her above. Hmm. I don't I don't want to put her above Horus because I just think Horus is better, just not by a whole ton. So we're going to put her right here, right next to Horus. And Gale. Gale's our last one. Uh, Gale is for Demon Prince and Frida. He's kind of trash in Demon Prince because he doesn't really he doesn't really have a whole lot of survivability in there. And his spells, of course, are absolutely laughable. But honestly, I he's really he he's weird. He's not very good, though he can like he he can I give him the same like sort of like treatment I would give like Albert where you can get use out of him, but He's just really not all that good. What he is good for, though, is Frida. He's literally made to counter, like, to counter Phase 2 Frida. He's made to help you with Phase 2 Frida. And I think that alone might get him into low A. I don't think he's because it's Henri. But he is there to destroy Phase 2 with you and then do nothing else, and he succeeds at that. And he succeeds at it well. And honestly, I think he deserves A. So, naturally, I mean, this uh, this is just my own matter of opinion. Hell, this could even change at any point in time. But in my opinion, this is my ranking of the summons. So, in S tier, we have Lap. In A tier, we have Swordmaster, Henri, and Gale. In B tier, we have Siegvard, Shira, ha uh, Horus, Hazel, Egon, and Paleshade. In C tier, we have Albert, Cuculus, and Goddard. In D tier, we have Hawkwood, Yuria, and Sorg, and in F tier, we have Cirrus and Orbeck. 
Again, this wasn't really meant to be a super long video, but I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you guys did, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. If you're not brand new, well, I consider Youngway memberships. Something, 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 $3 a month. Y'all know the drill at this point. For as low as $3 a month, you can get stuff like emotes, videos early, you get your name at the end of the video, like you can see with these lovely people. And you'll, uh, and you can even get me to buy one game of, of, my, of your choosing, and I'll play it on stream. We played Fight Crab a few months ago to celebrate Toyu, our first ever Aetherian in Gastelin. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys pop in for tonight's and tomorrow's streams, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!